Okay, um, moving right along. Our, our next up topic is from Tiffany and Mitch, Tiffany Stoll and Mitch Dunn at the University of Virginia. Uh, they're going to talk about making exceptions exceptional, uh, a new UI for tests and quizzes, the date time limit exceptions. I remember back when that was something we wished for, and now, of course, we have it, but now we're making improvements. So, uh, Tiffany, have you got control of the screen? Can you share your screen? We're about to see your face. That's good. Oh, here it comes. Good deal. You're muted, Tiffany. <laughs> Helps to unmute myself if, if you want to hear me. Uh, hi, uh, we were working on doing our Sakai 20.2 upgrade this summer and we did not previously have the um, exceptions to date and time limit um, enabled in tests and quizzes because we were on an older version. And uh, we noticed uh, in testing this, I noticed some um, usability issues. Um, mainly pointed out by this giant block of text here that explains away the confusing UI. <laughs> uh, so uh, one of the big problems is that it's not consistent with the overall assessment settings and in fact, date setting everywhere else in Sakai. Um, so for example, you have a checkbox for time limit and um, you know whether or not you want late submissions, but you come down in here and your exceptions are just a bunch of blank fields. You have a zero time limit, zero hours, zero minutes time limit. And um, you have to set it to zero if you want that to be uh, no time limit, which is really weird. Um, if you select a user and add an exception, um, they are added in this table where it shows like no late acceptance date, zero hours, zero minutes. But again, this is actually inheriting all of the dates from the assessment overall. So this is not true. There is a uh, late acceptance date, which is the same as the due date because no late's allowed. And um, additionally, I can create uh, two exceptions for the exact same user that are different. So that's, that's a problem. <laughs> then you don't know what they get. Um, and uh, finally, you have to click add an exception before you click save to actually have it implemented, which caused me to forget to save them. So let me go over to UVA's instance and show you uh, some of the improvements that Mitch has made on this uh, feature that I think are really great. Um, so here I am in my overall availability settings. I have an available due date set and no time limit here with uh, no uh, late submissions allowed. Now I come down into the exceptions. I first have to select whether I want a user or group exception. Uh, I select my user and now I have pre-populated all of the dates and times for the assessment overall. Um, if I were to say enable my time limit, again, it's with a checkbox, just like the overall assessment settings. I set a time limit here and, oh, maybe I decided I wanted to change that uh, from the availability and su submission settings. Uh, Dave has just asked, where do the pre-populated dates come from? I will show you in a second. They're coming from up here in availability and submissions. So let's say I forgot my time limit up here. I wanna give it uh, a time limit up here in the availability and submissions. Maybe I wanna allow late submissions uh, for the assessment overall. And I'm gonna copy this date and make it a, maybe a day later. Um, so now I go into exceptions. I've already started creating an exception here, but maybe I don't want that because I've just modified the stuff up in availability and submissions. So I can click clear exception, select the user again, and now it re-inherits everything that I've just done up here in availability and submissions. Um, and uh, when I make these changes, uh, so let's say I want to give this student the same due date as the overall assessment deadline, um, and maybe give them an extra 15 minutes on the test. I click add an exception, and by the way, I don't need to. I can uh, just click save, and that one exception that I have added would have been saved. Um, let me clear that out real quick. Uh, so one of the pieces of this work was cleaning up this table. Uh, the user group is no longer a disabled, confusing dropdown, just their name and uh, their username. We have the available date, due date, whether or not late submissions are accepted. And the final submission deadline in this case is the same as the due date because no late submissions were allowed and our time limit. Um, when we are creating exceptions, we also have uh, some notes here warning uh, what happens uh, when you have exceptions for groups and users. Um, and uh, let me add a quick exception for a group here so you can see uh, the difference there. 
Um, so here you see the group, the group name is listed uh, with group. Another piece of this work was uh, fixing the feedback display date issue. So before you could set a feedback display date earlier than the assessment's uh, due date, and then students could see their feedback during the test and get all their answers, and that was not good. So um, when you go to save now, it is checking that the show feedback date be later than uh, all exceptions and the assessment due date. And it presents you with an error message showing you the latest date uh, for all those exceptions and assessment that you need to set that feedback show date to. Uh, how does the late accept work when the user has an additional bit of time with the exceptions? Uh, so it, it works um, the same way as, as any other. There is a check to make sure that there's enough distance between the available date and the um, final submission deadline uh, to accommodate whatever the, the time limit is. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Mitch to talk about some of the technical aspects. Thanks, Tiffany. So some of the non-user facing features that we implemented um, involve logging. So I think Tiffany is going to show Graylog, which is the log aggregator we use at UVA. Um, so some of the events that we are logging now are when exceptions are created, updated, or deleted. Here we see a creating an extended time log entry. Extended time is just what exceptions are called within the source code. Um, and so from here, we can see who created the exception, who it was created for, and what values were created for it, such as the due date, the late handling, retract date, and the time limits. Um, and this would be the same format for updating and deleting exceptions. Just in those cases, it'll say updating extended time or deleting extended time. Um, another log entry that we've added are for when students are taking assessments, we now see what values they're getting in terms of due dates and time limits. This way we can see whether or not they got the assessment settings or a user exception or a group exception, just in case there's any confusion about what values they were trying to get. Um, and then another thing that we've started behind the scenes is trying to deduplicate a lot of the logic that's in Samigo. Uh, for this particular instance, this involved the settings beans. So there are two classes, one for the draft assessments and one for the published assessments. But I would say for 90% of the logic in these classes is exactly the same. So what we've done is remove that out into its own abstract class that these two classes now extend. And what this will do is it will help us maintain the features better in the future. So say there's a bug within the abstract class, we can just fix it in that one place versus before having to fix it in two different classes, basically the same way. And I think that does it for us. That's really fast. There are some interesting questions that are coming in the chat here. Uh, one is, Mitch, can you just talk briefly about Graylog? What is it? Is it an external tool that you use? Yes. So what Graylog is, is an external tool that we have brought into UVA. And we've made some modifications within the source code here. So that way, um, the format is called GELF. It's G-E-L-F. Yeah. And we're able to send uh, GELF log entries over to Graylog. And then that way, we just have everything in that one place. You know, we capture okay. a lot more information than if it were just, you know, opening up a text file via Vi on the server and just seeing a line entry for right. info, date, and whatever the uh, log is. Yeah, I'm, I've, I've, I've been stymied sometimes by the Sakai event log, finding, finding what I need in there. It's, it's tough. So, okay. Uh, mostly you're getting lots of kudos in here. People are saying this is a huge improvement. This is great. Um, any idea when it might be part of what release it might be a part of? No idea on that at the moment. Um, we, we have a lot of other stuff we're working on right now at UVA. Uh, so, you know, it's just a matter of trying to prioritize things. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I, I, you, you got a lot of people on this call who are like, bring it on. We're ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, okay, thanks, everyone. Any, yeah, appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Uh, we, you, all, you all did very well. You actually made up a minute here. That's good. <laughs> so 